Hi, I'm David Atten, Yorkshire born baker, food writer, and winner of the Great British Bake Off in 2019. In this series, we're going to be going on a journey through Britain's capital of cake, the North York Moors National Park. On this journey, we're going to be heading from Lowdale to High Moor through the most picturesque inland villages and coastal bays to find some of the most exciting local bakers. We'll also be discovering local seasoning ingredients to help you with a very special bake for the North York Moors National Park's 70th birthday this year. It's day three, another lovely sunny day, and I'm in Great Ayton, and I'm going to be jumping on board the scenic Esk Valley Railway, going through beautiful villages in the Esk Valley towards the coast to get some more North York Moors baking know-how and inspiration. I'll then be stopping off at Glazedale to chat to a couple who run a quirky organic tea garden in the two acres behind their cottage. After a quick chat and a bite to eat there, I'll be striking out on foot on the Esk Valley Walk to make my way from Glazedale to Gromont to check out some of Gromont's best cafes and bakeries. This is Great Ayton, often described as one of the gateways to the North York Moors. It's a lovely little spot with the River Leven meandering through the village and great views of Rosemary Topping, Captain Cook's Monument and the surrounding Cleveland Hills. It's got its fair share of great bakers and cafes too. The Velveteen Rabbit Luncheon Club does lovely cake and coffee in a quirky, shabby chic setting. And if you head just outside the village, you can find Fletcher's Farm Coffee Shop, a cafe located on a working Moors dairy farm. I could stay here all day, but let's get back to the station because I've got a train to catch. Right, I'm on the train on the S Valley Line and it is so beautifully scenic. It actually runs for 35 miles between Whitby and Middlesbrough through 17 beautiful villages, my village included. It's really popular with walkers, cyclists and sightseers on their way to Whitby and if you want to go on the North Yorkshire Moors Railway, it's great because they both stop at Gromont. There's plenty of places to stop. There's a lovely bakery at Danbury called the Danby Bakery. They do fantastic bread and homemade cakes that reflect the seasons. Danby is also home to Danby Lodge National Park Centre. You can get all the North York Moors information you need. Visit the Inspired by Gallery and the Park Life Cafe. The rugged moorland of the North York Moors is great countryside for cycling. In Great Fryupdale is the Yorkshire Cycle Hub, a cafe, bike shop and bunkhouse designed to offer cyclists everything they need to explore the National Park on two wheels. Shepherd's Hall is a quaint little riverside tea room in Lilom that serves wonderful tea and cake on vintage china. They have a reputation for offering visitors a warm welcome no matter how muddy their feet are. I just hopped off the train at Glazedale, a picturesque village in the Esk Valley. This was the childhood home of Nicholas Rea, whose books inspired the Heartbeat TV series. There's a Victorian Museum of Science, and most importantly, Bev and Bob's Brew, an organic tea garden with a difference. I'm gonna head there now. I've not even left the station yet, and I've just come across Maggie, who's selling sourdough out of the station house, and then Gretchen, who's got a pop-up cake stall as well, and I've had to get myself a scone. Well, we've arrived at Bev and Bob's Brew. I love gardens and I love cake, so I think this is gonna be the perfect combination. I mean, it's one thing being able to go for tea and cake somewhere, but to be able to have it in such a beautiful place. How did this actually come about? Because this is your garden? Yes. And your house? Yes. Bob, who has built it all over the last 10 years, I persuaded him into opening it because I thought, what is the point of having all this and nobody can come and see it? What I'm aiming for is to turn it into a local community place so people can come and read a book, paint, you know, sleep. We've had many a coast to coast to fall asleep down there for a couple of hours. Okay, Bob, I'm running out of superlatives to describe your garden because it is really incredible. How did it start? Because I'm finding it hard to believe that it didn't already look this amazing when you arrived. We moved in 11 years ago, which was a field, overgrown field with no real access, no paths. So it was just a slope down? Just a down. slope all the way down. Everything apart from the mature trees, we've planted. And I can see you're selling plants as well. Anything from the garden when we're working on it, we'll pot up. The money is not for us, we do it for charity. Oh wow. All local charities in the village and split it between them. Without prompting, I am a bit of a scone fiend and you brought out a scone. Now I hear, what's this scone first of all? It's an Australian lemonade scone. <laughs> now I've had a lot of scones, never had that before. What other scones do you do? This sounds very interesting. I always do a vegan version. I do a gluten-free version, sour cherry, sun-dried tomatoes and seed. Oh wow. 
cheese and mustard. So yeah, anything that takes me fancy. That is incredibly light and fluffy. Yes. And after this, I might try and get some secrets from you. Oh, <laughs> so I'd have really, to kill you. It's really, really good. <laughs> I could spend all afternoon here, but I might have overindulged on scones a little bit, and I need to get on the Esk Valley Walk to see loads of cool places before I get to Gromont. This is one of Glazedale's best loved landmarks, Beggar's Bridge, complete with local legend. According to local law, it was built by Thomas Ferris, son of a poor Glazedale farmer who rose from humble beginnings to become the mayor of Hull. As an impoverished youth, Thomas used to wade the river Esk to secretly court his sweetheart, Agnes, the daughter of the local squire. When Agnes's father refused to let them marry, Thomas went away to seek his fortune, then came back to claim his bride. When Agnes later died, Thomas built the pretty bridge in memory of his beloved wife. This is the River Esk. Its name means water in Celtic. It's one of only seven rivers in England that is home to the freshwater pearl mussel. These are the stepping stones at Egton. I used to love racing across here with my twin brother. Definitely the best way to cross the River Esk. I always keep my eyes peeled for honey for sale signs when I'm around here. I know that Brian Nellis, beekeeper and champion gooseberry grower at the annual Egton Bridge Gooseberry Show, usually has one outside his house at Egton Bridge. It's the best honey I've ever tasted and great for baking. And here's a fun fact for you. Graham Watson, local to Danby, has the world record for the heaviest ever gooseberry at 64.83 grams. There must be something in the soil around here. What a day. I'm now gonna be jumping back on the Esk Valley line to go back to my home village of Rosup. But if you are in Gromont, you should definitely check out the Barking Terrier Bakery cafe with a setting as good as their cakes. Their tea room is nestled inside Gromont's old primary school. The school dates back to 1846 and the part of the building that houses the cafe was the schoolroom with a roll of 111 pupils in 1865. It's been such a delight rediscovering the Esk Valley today and I particularly enjoyed meeting Bob and Bev and Bob's roses have given me a great inspiration for my birthday bake. Join me next time as I make the final leg of my journey around Britain's capital of cake, when I'll be taken to the waves and exploring the coast between Scarborough and Whitby by boat in search of more inspiration for my North York Moors 70th birthday bake. Bye for now.